Okay, hello, this is Lois back with the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, and we are on episode 5. Um, I know it's been a while, but um, I just need to take a break because just a lot of real life stuff that had been happening, so... Um, oh man, I'm really excited to finish up this uh, first game. And uh, it's pretty crazy that we still have a whole nother game to do after this. But I'm excited to get on with it. So let's continue. Sixteenth of April, one fourteen a.m. Baker Street. The door to the window banks is—it's open, and the lamp is burning. It must be Gina. It must be Gina, mustn't it? That is hope. There's nothing more sinister. What? Come. There's not a moment to lose. Clearly, something is afoot inside. There's no one here. Oh yes, there is. <gasps> ah! Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Sholmes. What the? Has Sholmes been shot? Leave me, Mr. Nutterhudo. Uh, but uh, after them, go. Right. Blast. I've lost them. Hello, hello. What have we here? The alarm was just raised for them from this pawnbroker, sir. Would you know something about that? Officer, come with me. It's my friend, Mr. Sholmes. He's been shot. Shot. The policeman close behind me and ran back to the window banks. To be continued. Oh wow, we are right on the cusp of the end of that uh, part. I'll be alright, Mr. Nadolo. After them, go! Behind that door. In the storeroom. Hurry. It's Gina? From that moment, Winnebank's pawn brokery became a crime scene. Everything that followed happened in a whirlwind of activity. The arrival of the police, the preliminary investigation of the scene, and the questioning... It was just before dawn, before I was allowed back to my lodgings at 221B. Sixteenth April, six twenty one AM. Narahoro's legal consultancy. Oh, Iris. A telegram came, but all it says was wait at home. Oh, yes. We asked one of the policemen to have it sent. It was simply impossible to come back. When I woke up, I was all alone. Hurley and Gina were gone. Everyone was gone. What happened, do you know? Poor Iris. She's trembling. She's obviously trying very hard not to let herself get too worried. I'll explain everything that I know. 
something awful has happened, hasn't it? Yes, I'm afraid so. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, Iris, but Mr. Windbank is dead. He was shot. We discovered it in the early hours of the morning. Oh. Yes. I had a feeling. You did? Well, I saw all those police carriages pulling up outside his shop. So I knew something must have happened there. When we entered Winnebanks in the small hours, we disturbed a gang of two thugs. They ran out into the street and I chased after them, but they all got away. So... It was one of them who shot old Mr. Windebank, I suppose. I don't know, but that's not what the police believe at the moment. Oh, why not? They've arrested someone else as their prime suspect, you see. Gina. D Ginny? But why? Well, the thing is... No, Ginny wouldn't do something like that. I know, I know. None of us think she did it. Then why have they arrested her? I'm sorry. There was nothing I could do. I don't understand why they arrested Ginny. It's not fair. What about the two thugs that, w that were at the scene? Why aren't they prime suspects? After all, they shot Holly dead, didn't they? No, I, I mean, Mr. Sholmes isn't dead, Iris. Uh, this is all so horrible. The thing is, Mr. Windbank was found on the floor in the storeroom where he keeps all the deposited articles. And the storeroom door was locked from the inside. I see. But he wasn't alone in there. Gina was next to him on the floor as well. Oh no! And according to the detectives who investigated afterwards... Don't tell me. There was no one else in the room. Yes, exactly. How did you know? It's the only explanation. Yes. The only explanation, indeed. What do you mean by that, Bruno? Well? Uh, what can I say? I'm damned if I agree and damned if I don't. So where's this- where's Hurley, then? Is he still investigating the scene? You really ought to have some breakfast. It's not good for him to miss meals. I don't want you to worry, Iris, but... I have some news about Mr. Scholz. He was taken to the hospital this morning. What? Well, uh... When we entered Windbanks, a gun was fired and... He took a bullet. He... Hurley? Was shot? No. No. It, it's alright. His, his life isn't in danger. Really? Are you sure? Where is he? Which hospital? He, he, he's at St. Steiner's. They're tending to him there. I must see him. At once. I'm sorry, Iris, but you can't. Why not? It's not fair. I'm a family member. I should be allowed. No, I mean, nobody can see him at the moment. He's not allowed any visitors. They're preparing to operate, you see. To, to operate? Oh, poor Hurley. It was the two thugs who were in Mr. Windbank's shop. They saw Mr. Sholmes when we disturbed them, you see. It was pitch black inside the shop at the time. My mind went totally blank, I'm afraid. I... I just froze. After them, go! After that, I ran out into the street, but... Well, they were long gone. I... I shouldn't have hesitated. I'm so sorry. It's my fault. I let them get away. I think... That's a very good thing. Sorry? Well, if you'd seen which way they went and chased after them... They might have been shot as well, Bruno. On top of everything else, I... I couldn't bear that. Oh, Iris. Where's Susie, Bruno? She's still at the police station. Oh, why? I expect she's still being questioned. Police said they wouldn't be finished for a while. Why aren't you there then? 
Well, I didn't get a good I didn't get a good look at the criminals anyway, so they weren't questioning me for long. And Miss and Sato stayed behind at the scene to tend to Mr. Sholm, so they didn't get started until later. Ah, oh, I see. Besides, one of us had to come back to be with Iris. I'm glad Inspector Gregson agreed me to leave me early. You should have let me know, and I would have come to the station. I'm afraid I need to go out again now, Iris. There's not much I can do at the moment. But I can at least try to find out how Mr. Sholmes and Gina are getting on. I want to go too! Take me with you, Runo! I can't stand just sitting around here waiting! I'm not sure how I feel about taking a ten-year-old child to the scene of a murder. But I don't want to leave her all alone leave her all alone here either. Alright then, Iris. Perhaps you can help me. Oh yes! I'd love to. Gina's at the prison. Mr. Sholmes is probably in his hospital bed. And don't forget, we have to visit the crime scene. We need to conduct a thorough investigation. Ah, I can see you're ready for action. Imagine Iris would appreciate going to the hospital sooner rather than later. Okay. So maybe we should go to the hospital first. But they said they're not taking any visitors, right? Uh, you haven't been to this place yet. Don't forget to take me when you go. The hospital where Mr. Sholmes was taken having have been shot. Uh, 16th April, St. Steiner's Ho- Steiner's? St. Sinner's? St. Sinner's Hospital, Ward 3. Hey! Oh! He's not here! No, that's strange. The nurse definitely said he was in the bed by the window, didn't she? Oh, I know what's probably happened. Hurley was being a big bait, and the bullet wound wasn't bad after all, so he's been sent home. Hmm, I'm not so sure about that, baby or not. There's no question that it was a fairly serious injury and that Mr. Holmes sh suffered. Oh. Hello, hello, what have we here? This ward is off limits, no visiting. So what are you doing in here? Well, I'll have you know. Where's Hurley's next of kin? Eh? Oh, oh, well, begging your pardon then, ma'am, sir. A little lady in a curious eastern gentleman. The great mystery solver has a, mi has a mysterious family, eh? That's how you see us, um, sure. Where is he, Constable? Where's Hurley? I believe he is currently in the operating theatre, ma'am, undergoing an expensive operation. Extensive? It has been several hours since he went in. Oh dear, is he going to be alright? Well, it doesn't appear to be walking, you see. The anesthesia. The anesthetic, that is. Oh! I have heard a report that the gentleman claims they have, that he have made out a little too much to drink last night. Coffee, that is. Ha. Huh. Anyway, I think it will be fair to assume that it won't be back here for several hours yet. I see. Thank you, Constable. Perhaps we should leave and come back later. Oh, poor Holly. Okay. Currently in surgery, so we can't visit. Okay, so let's head to the prison then. Poor Ginny, we have to help her. Sixteenth April, local prison cell thirteen. Hello, Gina. Oh, you saw the grenade launcher Hurley and I made. I wish you wouldn't point it at me all the time, though. What are you here for? G Ginny. I have a feeling it's because of us that you've ended up in trouble. So we were thinking that we might be able to help you. Well, you can't. Sorry? You, Erd, get lost. Don't be like that, Ginny. I know you didn't do it. You never shoot someone, I just know you wouldn't. You think you know me? Well, the other one. Oh. We ain't got the first idea about the likes of me. I'm a thief. I pinch people's purses when they're walking down the street. 
That's all I'll get by. And if I saw my chance, I'd sneak into a bowling shop any day of the week. Just to see what I can lay all my hands on. Get it? That's the kind of person I am. But, uh, but Ginny. I'll be in court tomorrow, they said. Some cove came by before and said he'd be a lawyer for me and the like. Said it was my right or something. Something. But I told him to get stuffed. I don't need no lawyer. I don't need no one. She couldn't be staring at me anymore, obviously, if she tried. Why are you being like this, Ginny? I don't understand, Gina. Why would you send the public defender away? They want me to sign some papers. Represent representation papers or something like that. It's all going to be rigged anyway. The whole trial. A bit on me because I'm a kid. That's what grown-ups always do. Why do you think that? Because that's how it's always been for me, growing up, up in the slums. Me whole life. If you do what the grown-ups tell you, it'll get your mates drugged off by the coppers. Or worse. I've had that happen to me before and all. Been sold out but and nearly snaffled on the back of it. You can't trust no one. That's the point. Soon as you do, you're gone to grass. Dead. Gina, listen. If you like, in tomorrow's trial, I could forget it. Ginny! Don't you trust Runo? Nah, I don't. Look, I'll ask you nicely now. Just leave me alone. Will you tell us what happened, Gina? Last night at the pawnbrokers. There's nothing to tell. I figured pay me, so I broke into the place and started going through the storeroom. The old bloke walked in on me and you know the rest. But why, Ginny? Why would you do that? Isn't it obvious? The place is full of stuff I could sell for a shilling or two. Dr diving ain't easy, you know. It's a lot of work and half the time you get nothing. Is that really why you broke into the place? What? Are you sure the true reason wasn't something else? Oh, give it a rest. What would be the point anyway, eh? Nothing I could say would make a blind bit of difference. Please tell us, Ginny. We'll believe you, whatever it is. Believe me? Don't be daft. You can't believe nothing. Every everyone lies all the time. And you know what? When it comes to liars, I'm the biggest of the lot. I, I have told some unforgivable lies, I have. Uh, what do you mean by that? What unforgivable lies? What do you mean before, Gina, when you said you were the biggest liar of the lot? Why don't you tell us what these unforgivable lies you've told are? Maybe we can help. Sorry. We're out of time. They're gonna wanna question me now. Ginny, please. Oh, yeah. I want to give you this. Something to remember me by. Photograph a print or of a really adorable cat. I found it in one of the pockets of all this coat. Ain't no point in me having it. I wonder what a little photograph like that was doing in a pocket of that overcoat. Anyway, don't bother coming again. Bye. Oh, Ginny. White cat photograph. A photograph depicting a sweet little white cat obtained from Gina while interviewing her in her prison cell. Okay, I guess she doesn't want to talk to us anymore. Wonder what really happened. Okay. So, uh, we definitely want to go to the pawn brokery. Check out the crime scene. 16th April, Windebanks Pond Brokery. Lots of police around. Obviously. So where it happened then? Last night? That's right. 
the two thugs I told you about were obviously ransacking the place looking for valuables. But... Apart from the policemen in here, you wouldn't know anything had happened. There's no sign of a disturbance. No, you're right about that, actually. In fact, if anyone, it's the police who seem to be the ones doing the ransacking. I know what you mean. They're like a gang of organized criminals, all dressed in black. Oi, I heard that. Oh, Inspector, uh, good morning. Hm, I suppose I th ought to thank you for your vigilance last night. We got to the scene before it was disturbed, at least. Shame on you to let the two rogues get away, mind. Yes, I'm sorry about that. I, I thought you'd assign extra men to the meat to the beat around here, Grixy. Now look what's happened. Hurley's been injured because there was not enough police on duty. Oh, uh, you, you, oh, your ladyship. <laughs> No one told me you were coming. I expect you to take full responsibility for what happened to Hurley. You see that he has the very best medical care. Well, of course, your ladyship. The very best doctors in the capital attended to him as we speak. I don't think it's Runo's fault that the rogues managed to get away, is it? Chasing criminals is the police's job. Uh, absolutely, your ladyship. As you say, ma'am, as you say. The gent in black is totally blameless. Everyone's in agreement about that. Would you believe it? They look like a completely different person with Iris. Talk about a personality change. Uh, oh, where are my manners? Are you thirsty, your ladyship? <laughs> oh my god. Perhaps you'd like some juice. Some ice refreshing fruit juice? Oh, why? Are you thirsty, Grexy? I have some of my special herbal tea with me if you'd like some. really hit the spot, your ladyship. I didn't even recognize him like this. So, how's the investigation going, Inspector? Listen to it, really? A very simple case of this? There's some very definitive evidence. We're just about to charge that diver we arrested last night, in fact. Gina, you're, you're gonna charge her? That's right. Should be able to bring her before the judge at the Bailey tomorrow. Definitive evidence, you say? What is it? Come on, show me. Uh, your ladyship, I, I, as much as I wish I could oblige you, I'm afraid... Ah, I see. You've already captured the pair of thugs who broke in here last night, have you? What the... And you're going to put them on stand as witnesses, are you? Uh, 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 how could you... Oh! How could you possibly know that? I had a feeling, that's all. Remind me never to try to keep a secret from Iris. So you've arrested the two men who shot Mr. Sh Sholmes, have you? Well, yes. They were rounded up pretty quickly by the lads on the beat. And Miss Lestrade? And Miss Lestrade is being held at the prison? She should be. Assuming she hasn't lifted the key from a the jailer, of course. He does anything about Mr. Sholmes. What's his condition? Sorry, I'm not at liberty to divulge that information. Scotland Yard matters are strictly confidential. Well, I know he's being operated on at St. Sinners. Why can't I see him? I'm friendly, you know. Uh, oh, I'm terribly sorry, your ladyship. It's the hospital's policy. No visitors at all. Oh. The bullet must have hit an artery in his midriff. He's lost a fair bit of blood. Oh no! It didn't seem too bad in the first hour or so, but a hemorrhage like that is enough to make even the one and only Sholmes pipe down. Mr. Sholmes is a human like the rest of us, you know. Well, anyway, he's having emergency surgery right now. They've got to stop that bleeding. But he'll be alright, won't he? We'll be able to make him better. Uh, uh, of course, your ladyship. He'll be as right as rain before you know it. Really? How do you know? Well, how do I know? Well, uh, uh, because, of course. Uh, yes, because Mr. Sholmes is such a great detective, that's why. We don't pray the doctors have a better graph. 
grasp of what's needed to make someone well again. Oh dear. Please don't die, Hurley. I'll report your ladyship the moment I hear is out of the oper operating theatre. Um, I couldn't help but noticing, Inspector. Well, out with it, Sunshine. Well, there seems to be a marked difference between the way you talk to me and to Iris. Watch the sauce, Sunny. I'm a copper and we don't go in for favoritism. But he's right. He treats us differently. It's because of those Avengers of Herlock Shome stories, that's why. Oh, I crop up in them, don't I, Inspector Tobias Gregson? Oh, well, yes, because you're an, an acquaintance of Hurley's. What did you write about the inspector, Iris? Hmm, I don't remember, really. It was one of Sholmes' lines. Gregson is the smartest of the Scotland Yarders, is how he put it. Oh, did I write that? You know, uh, you know what that one line did for me, eh? The very next month, my pay doubled. Doubled, I tell you. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, because everyone at the yard reads them. They read all the Herlock Shome stories. They've even set up a fan club for me. Of course, that explains everything. It was around that time that you became such a toady to me. Can you blame me? Or well, take this one bad word from you and Shome's change its tune about me. Gregson? No. That great detective will say he's getting quite overrated these days. Think of what would happen to my salary if that came out in print, eh? The whole thing gives me the willies. I can't tell you how many nights of sleep I've lost to worry about it. That would never happen, happen Gregsy. Every month, when the new Rants magazine comes out, my hands are trembling as I turn the pages. Oh, how awful for you. Here, have some my tea to settle your nerves. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah, oh, lovely. Thank very much. Let's really hit the spot, your ladyship. Tea total. Oh, yeah. There's something I was supposed to talk to you about, actually, Mr. Nuthood. Yes? What is it? I've got an important message for you. I've clean forgot about it. Until now. An important message? I wonder what it could be. Are you going to tell me what this important message is then, Inspector? Yeah. It's about that young lady who's normally by your side. Your assistant. Dear Susie, is she alright? She's at the station. She's at the station, isn't she? Being questioned, I believe. Nope. Not anymore. She's had to head off. Head off? Where? To Lord Strongheart's office, of course. He summoned her. Ah. Yes, of course. I forgot about that. One of the whip stops. Took her there in a yard carriage after we finished questioning her. But she asked to tell you she didn't have the prepared for the return journey and to go and meet her there. She's got a nerve using Scotland Yard as a blooming messaging service. I see, well, thank you for passing that on, Inspector. Why did Susie have to go all the way to see the Lord Chief Justice? She didn't tell me, but I better head over to the Lord Chief Justice's office to fetch her right straight away. Okay, so that's where we're going next, I guess. Uh, hold on. Let's take a look here at this stuff, because there's this scrap at the bottom. Hmm. Alright then, let's see what we can uncover. Oh, wait, what do you think you're doing, Sunshine? You can't touch anything in here. Oh, but we were hoping to investigate. This is a crime scene for Pete's sake. No touching. No, I guess we're not allowed to. What's the problem, Grixie? Bruno's a lawyer, you know that. Oh, I'm ever so sorry, your ladyship. I'm ever so sorry. The rules and regulations are thrown on my side. Of course, if Mr. Nadahuru was been properly appointed by the accused, that'd be another matter. The accused? You could show me some representation papers. I'd be only too happy to let you nose around. Okay, so we're not officially, um, Gina's lawyer yet, so... Do you hear that, Bruno? You might need Jenny to sign some representation papers. Looks like presenting the detective here with the correct paperwork is the only way. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, the prison cells where Miss Janelle started being held pending trial. We need to do all we can to help her as quickly as possible. 
Okay, so we need to go to um, the Justice Chief Justice's office. Where Suze is waiting for us. Excuse me, the April British Ex Supreme Court, Lord Chief Justice's office. Yes. No matter how many times I come here, I always get the same sense of oppressive somehow. You think the place is oppressive? I think it's normal. How so? I mean, look at that suit of armor over there. You can take that seriously, can you? Maybe it thinks the same about you. So everything is clear with regard to Maud's arrangements, I trust. Yes, thank you very much. I'm just guessing if that's what they're saying. There they are, Suzato-san and Lord Strongheart. I wonder what they're talking about. They both look very serious. Very good. There's nothing further to discuss. You may return to your lodgings. No doubt you have much to do in preparation for your return to your homeland. Wait, what did he just say? Your return to your homeland? Susato-san. Oh, um, Mr. Naruhodo. What was that all about? Ah, oh, Miss Nodahulu, thank you for coming to collect your colleague. What's this all about? Why are you talking to her about Miss Susato's return to her homeland? And, and, tomorrow? Tomorrow? What, what about Jenny's trial? You mean, she's been formally charged now? Oh dear. Mrs. Sato, what's all this about? No, oh, please don't concern yourself, Mr. Nadhogo. It's only me going back to Japan. Your life here can continue just as- That's not what I asked. What happened? Why are you leaving? It's my father. He's fallen ill. Oh, no. Professor Mikotoba? If I may. Yes, yeah, sorry. You must be the defendant. You no scared Naruto, I believe. Yes, yes, that's right. My name is Yujin Mikotoba. I'm a professor at the Forensic Medicine at Yume University. We received an international telegram from the Empire of Japan informing us of the news. Ten days ago, father collapsed with a fever. The cause is apparently unknown. And it seems he grows weaker day by day. I... I don't believe it. As you're all aware, the voyage from here to your country's capital, Tokyo, takes some 50 days. I thought it would be prudent to hasten Mr. Suseto's departure as much as possible. Yes, absolutely. Man, imagine being on a boat for 50 days. That's a long time. I will leave London first thing tomorrow morning. I can't believe this is happening. So Jean has been charged? She'll have to appear in court? Yes, she was formally charged a few hours ago, and the date of the trial has been already already been set for tomorrow. No, not even 24 hours later? Gina, ah, the Lestrade girl and the murder of the Baker Street pawnbroker, yes. An old two conspicuous case. The pickpocket was clearly disturbed at mid-robbery and the shot the man in a panic. No. Yard is overstretched as it is without wasting time on these open and shut cases. It's not wasting time. Jenny would never do something like that. Mr. Nadahodo. Oh, um, yes, Lord Strongheart? Indifference of your fine service estate, I shall overlook this young girl's insolence. But I have no recollection of admitting a child into my office. Leave. Now. Of course, Lord Strongheart. Criminals will tell the most powerful lies in order to evade justice. 
The police can ill afford the time it takes to unravel the other untruths. Meanwhile, more crimes are perpetrated. We have far more serious matters to which to contend. Serious matters? Didn't Gregson mention something like that yesterday? Yes, Inspector Gregson made a similar remark yesterday. There's no concern of yours, though I'm sure I need not remind you of that. Three minutes precisely until my next meeting. You must excuse me. There's just one more thing, Lord Strongheart. Which is? It's Miss Lestrade's trial. I wonder if you might permit me to defend her. A timely suggestion. Sorry? The girl currently has no representation. But, but that's not fair. She, yes, she may be a pickpocket, but she still deserves a fair trial. Do not misunderstand me, young lady. The government provides for those too poor to afford representation with a public defender. The accused need only sign the relevant paperwork, and the defense barrister will be assigned to the case. However, the young girl in question has refused that right. Why would she do that? A question you would do well to direct at Miss Lestrade. You'll find her at the local prison. Yes, thank you. Now then, it's time I was leaving. Good day to you. What a day. Gina charged with murder? Susan so son about to leave? Come, Mr. Nataro. Iris, we must make haste. But, Susie... You're leaving for Japan tomorrow morning, aren't you? Don't you have packing and things to do? As Mr. Nataro's judicial assistant, my personal circumstances are of no consequence. My sole purpose remains to help you in whatever way I can. Thank you, Miss Susato. That's a very pensive look. I think we ought to visit Gina first. In any case, I should like to wish her, to tell, wish her well before I leave. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. Let's go. If I'm honest, this has completely thrown me off. I'll just have to do what I can, as a lawyer. Oh, man. Gina must be feeling very lonely, I imagine. 16th April, local prison, cell 13. Ma Hello again, Gina. Oh no. What are you lot here for now? Found the muzzle of the grenade launcher shoved into our faces yet again, obviously. Hmm. I think I need to improve the way you load ammunition to that thing, don't I? Look. You can come as many times as you like, but I ain't got nothing more to say to you. Gina. I wonder if you might hear me out. There's something I'd like to say. What? I'm sorry to say. Then I must reluctantly bid you farewell. Eh? Farewell? Tomorrow I must begin my journey back home, to Japan. I fear we may never meet again. Oh, right. I've had the pleasure of meeting so many lovely people here in London. I have so many wonderful memories. And yet, as things stand now, it will be a glum parting indeed. Poor Iris is so miserable. Susie. What? Well, that ain't my business. With Iris and Miss Naruto believe you to be innocent, Gina. They put their faith in you. But somehow, you can't find it in your heart to put your faith in them. Yeah, that's right, I can't. What of it? It grieves me greatly to have to say goodbye to my friends when they are so clearly unhappy. Because of you. What? Is it my fault? Yes. So I have one final request, Gina, before our paths never cross again. Right here and now. I want you to show both of them that you don't deserve the faith they've invested in you. Huh? Only by doing that will you truly be as alone as you claim to be. What are you talking about? What do you expect me to do, eh? You've told us that everyone lies. 
So prove it by admitting one of your own untruths. What about what you said before, Ginny? You said something about unforgivable lies. Miss Tell, Mr. Nadahodo and I risk the truth now. That is my last request before I leave. My last request is a judicial assistant. No, uh, I can't. Whatever these lies are, they're obviously weighing very heavily on Gina's mind. Gina, I could be wrong, but... Is it something to do with what happened two months ago? Something about that trial? The one in which the Magnus McGilded was acquitted? No. Oh. The case of that mysterious murder that took place inside the Omnibus. You were called as a witness by the prosecution. Is that what this is about? Yeah, you're right. Because in, in that trial... I lied. I lied that you wouldn't believe. Will you tell us about it now? Like you said, it all happened two months ago. The couples got old to me and shoved me in the witnesses' stand. And based on your and based on your testimony, Mr. McGilded was declared innocent. Yeah, well the the thing is, I lied about a whole bunch of stuff. I knew it. What sort of thing did you lie about? I was hiding under the seat that night. That was the truth. It was pitch black in that little cubby hole. I couldn't see a thing. And, and then... I heard that loud thud. Like someone falling on the floor. That's when Mr. McGilder discovered you. Yeah. He pulled me out from under the seat and sat me next to the dead man. There wasn't much light to see by, but when I looked at my hands, I had the cow's blood all over him. I was so scared, I... Couldn't even speak. You had his blood on your hands. In other words, it was Gina that witnessed the. That was, it was Gina that the witnesses on the roof deck saw through the skylight. Then Mr. McGilda started asking you questions. I suppose, who you were and why you were hiding under the seat. Yeah, he did. Only, that's not all. What do you mean? I mean, he threatened me. Threatened you how? He made me swear. About what I see and what I heard. About what he was going to do after the cove was found dead. It made me swear I wouldn't tell anyone. Anyone. Tell no one about any of it. And if I did that, he said he'd let me scupper before the coppers showed up. Gina, you must tell me what he swore you to secrecy about. What you saw, what you heard, everything. You said Mr. McGillan made you not swear to tell anybody what you saw. But you were in a pitch black compartment under the seat the whole time, weren't you? Yes, with Mr. McGillan sitting above your head, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's true, but... It was when I heard the thud of the cove in on the floor. I let out a little scream, see? Couldn't help it. McGillan heard that and dragged me out by my arm, and that's when I saw it. It was on the floor next to the old geezer where I'd been stabbed. A disc, all bright and shiny. A disc? Do you mean... Yeah, that's it. The one what the D took off took off me at Windebanks. So the music bus disc was there on the floor of the omnibus? Not for long. McGilded spotted straight away. He picked it up a smartish and stuffed it in the inside pocket. So that disc was in the omnibus two months ago at the scene of Mr. Mason's murder. And the bog trotter told me. If I want to mutter a word of it to no one. Hmm, interesting. Because it was so dark under that seat in the cab. I was straining my ears the whole time. After a while, I heard the door and a f the footsteps inside the cabin. Presumably that was Mr. McGilda getting on board. Nah, not only him. Oh. Because I could definitely make out the footsteps of two people. In that case, 
It would seem likely that it was Mr. McGilden and the victim. Mr. Thrice fired Mason. In his testimony during the trial, Mr. McGilden claimed he slept during the carriage ride. Um, but whenever I'm in the carriage, I'm taken with a fierce tiredness and I always succumb to it. And your own testimony, Gina, support it is. Olgaria was the Irishman snoring. Yeah, that wasn't exactly true. Neither of them was asleep. I could hear him talking the whole time in low voices. What? What were they talking about? Sorry, I don't know. The sound of all... The sound of the horses and the wheels was too loud. But that still tells us something. Mr. McGilden and the victim knew each other. So McGilden was lying, as I suspected. I knew it wasn't going to take long before someone raised the alarm that the, that the bloke had been killed. Yes, you are quite right. The other passengers on the roof deck noticed very quickly. So when the cab came to a stop, McGilded told me to hide back under the seat again. I climbed in and I and waited. The two coes from up top ran off to get the coppers. Yes, I'm um, Mr. Fairplay and Mr. First. Right. And after they'd gone, McGilded asked the driver to do him a favor. A favor? Now then, fella, what I need you to do is take this code of mine and deposit it with a nearby pawnbroker. And for your troubles, let's see now. I, I'll give you ten guineas. A nearby pawnbroker? You mean on Baker Street? Yep, you got it. It was Winterbanks. The coach, he snapped up the money and ran off to pop his coat as fast as he could. Then there was no one left in the carriage. McGilded opened the box under the seat and let me get out of there. Not without conditions. I see. Oh. So that's how she ended up with the coat, because I was like pretty sure that was Mr. McGilded. And she said it was her dad's, which is not the case, but like. That's how she knew about it and what happened and stuff. Were the, what were McGilded's conditions then? When you go free, I mean. Not telling us so. Not for anything. About what I saw and what I heard. And there was something else as well. There's more? Yeah. This is the most important thing, he said. I'm after sending the coachman on a little errand for me with some small change in his hand. Now then. Did you hear what I asked of him? Did you see anything at all? At all? He asked him to go pop your weasel, right? Aye. The fiend's taken me overcoat to a deposit with the pawnbroker hereabouts. I want you, lass, to take the redemption ticket for it. Do you understand? What? You want me to have the ticket? That's right. And I'll come and fetch it from you later. Sometime within the next two months. You're to hang on to it until then. Is that clear? And whatever you do, don't lose it. Alright then. And in case I might happen to be delayed at all. You're to go to the pawn shop, Windebank, so it is. And you're to extend the loan for the two months is up. If I forget, the article will be forfeited and old, any old thing could come along and buy it. Eh, but, but I ain't got that kind of brass. There's five pounds. That should be enough. They understand each other, lass. Don't try anything funny now. If you go against me. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it. Good, and one more thing. In a few days from now, you'll be visited by the police, I've no doubt. The coppers? Aye, they'll come asking you to take the standing court to testify as a witness. So let's just have a wee chat about that, shall we? What is it that you might say, and what is it that you won't? After it gone over it all, I picked, I piped it, got far away as, from there as, as I could. It did. He did the bomb broker stick it in some bushes near the scene. I want to fetch it, and the next day, in the next day, once it got dark. So Mr. McGilded planted it. 
planned it and coerced Gina into giving a false testimony. Bet you're ready to string me up, eh? I lied. In that big old courtroom, I told some corkers. The thing, the thing is, he said it, it would make it so he wouldn't live in the East End no more. That's what he threatened me with. What a wicked man. He knew everyone what went on in the back slums. He knew that we had no one to look after us, and we was all just looking out for each other, getting by together. So you mean Mr. McGilded would have... In a heartbeat, he could have had a lot of us chased out in there if he wanted. And then, where would we have gone, eh? Nowhere, that's where. So, I didn't have no choice. Thank you, Gina, for telling us everything. But, I'm for it now, eh? Go on, admit it. You must be livid. Well, you can make amends by doing me a simple favour. A favour? What? Sign the representation papers for tomorrow's trial. Eh? If you don't actually want me to represent you in court, you can rip it up later. But we need that paperwork or we can't investigate. The police won't let us. Investigate what? The scene of the incident last night. Mr. Strom was shot, you see. You what? Hurley's having a big operation right now, Ginny. Is it bad? Is he going to be alright? Show me he's going to be alright. Right? That's why I want to investigate. For Mr. Strom's sake, as much as anything. Right. Uh, hey Raymond. Ooh, welcome back. Uh, did you play this stream? Uh, I didn't, actually. Um, I haven't played it since, so, um, we're just continuing from last time. Um, what happened so far today was that, um, we saw that Ginny ran off and then, um, in the middle of the night, and it was at the pawnbrokers, and then we went to the pawnbrokers, and then there was, like, two mysterious guys. One of them shot Mr. Holmes, so he's having surgery right now in the hospital, and then we found Gina and the pawnbroker guy. The pawnbroker guy was shot dead. Gina was holding the gun, and she- but she was also on the floor. And they were in the back room together, on the ground. So everyone thinks it's Gina, but obviously we think differently. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Shom should be okay, but it's just uh, everyone's worried about him right now because he's uh, having emergency surgery. What you're saying is, if I sign that bit of paper, everyone's happy, is that it? Something like that. Mr. Sato? Yes, of course. I have the represent papers here. I, I don't need no one to stick up for me, though. No law or nothing. Poor Ginny. She seems so lonely. Gina's representation papers. The paperwork signed by Gina to put me in charge of her defense, showing this to Scotland Yard detectives gains us access to the crime scene. Well, at least this should mean we can investigate this scene at Windbanks now. Yes. And perhaps we can come back to visit Ginny when we're done there. I feel like we finally cracked Gina. She's open to us. She's opened up to us at last. And now I have her representation papers. No one else knows just what a responsibility that is. Anyway, for now it means Inspector Gregson can't stop us investigating Windebanks. Although, something tells me he's not going to be happy about it. To be continued. Alright, saving time. <laughs>